So the integration of uh, climate change and disaster risk management in the Pacific really came from uh, uh, an observation from the Pacific Island countries and the common sense of having to work out these issues in a more coherent approach. In 2005, um, Cook Islands saw five events in a row in, during the cyclone season and 2008-2009, uh, uh, a lot of the Pacific Island countries uh, come together and uh, started to discuss uh, about having uh, uh, creating GNAPs, joint national action plans, that would make more sense for the policy and co coherence and the policy approach for addressing those two issues. With regards to the two issues and the strong national support, this uh, uh, dynamics was taken to the regional level. Um, after a few consultations in 2016, the leaders adopted the Framework for Resilient Development in the Pacific, the FRDP, which really is an integrated approach for climate change and DRM in the Pacific. The rationale uh, for integrating both is uh, really a common sense for the Pacific, as I said very earlier. Um, it's um, it brings common resources together, it avoids duplications, it is um, increasing coordination between actors um, and uh, it makes uh, a better use of car resources in Pacific Islands where sometimes there is limited human resources, limited financial resources, limited capacity. Uh, with the community level um, there is a greatest uh, potential for harmonizing DRR and CCA as the uh, difference between the two is less relevant. I'll give you an example in a, of a DRSCC activity in the community level. Um, planting mangroves, for example, can um, avoid the erosion and ensure your coastal protection. Um, the erosion that is of course uh, going to happen with the climate change impacts that, that are going to be seen more and more in the coming years. Um, and the mangroves is also a carbon sink as well, protecting your community for let's say the storm surge that can happen with a cyclone event. So the Pacific Island countries still face some challenges for the integration. Um, so those, some of those challenges are due to capacity constraints, lack of coordination between ministries, lack of communication, sometimes a lack of leadership or political will. Um, and um, we also observe at the national level um, that there is uh, still a, a difference between the um, global frameworks that are still separated and uh, this integration of the two frameworks is a global first. So sometimes the donors still have an approach that is uh, separated and, and for countries implementation it's difficult to have this integration. We also observe that uh, the quantifying the impact of uh, and measuring the impact of DRM and CC activities when we monitor and uh, we want to uh, um, evaluate the activity, it can be a little bit difficult because the impact of those activities sometimes come to a mid to a long term and this can be hard for countries to measure and to justify the value of having this integration. ways to address uh, those uh, barriers and to facilitate the integration at the country level. Um, one could be to have a strong political will and uh, leadership at the national level, maybe a champion that can promote these ideas. You also want to have uh, all your stakeholders involved in uh, enhancing the integration. So that goes through a good communication between your actors. It also goes through a good, communi good communication between sectors and uh, having these ways of uh, people getting together and sharing their issues and, and developing solutions for what they're facing. Um, I said it's also a community, uh, community level, so you need to promote the bottom-up approaches for integrating those issues and you need to listen to the community needs. 
Importantly also, um, to break down those barriers is to have uh, good coordination between the services where, and all the, whether it's NDMOs, MET services, um, the climate change adaptation advisors and all those different stakeholders that can bring deci uh, decision making and um, science based uh, information through the process. Um, Finally, uh, a good support from regional organizations uh, that can help build capacity building and can support mechanisms and bring some technical assistance can help throughout the process. And I'd say that uh, this uh, integration is an ongoing process and you need your all stakeholder approach to have something successful and a lot of work is ahead of us.